Well, let's go to a voicemail that came in from one of our listeners. This is from Liz. My question for Pastor Adriel is, how can we restore defiled sexuality? For those of us who have committed gross sexual sins, how can we recover and heal from that? I feel as if I don't deserve to be married or have sex because my past sexual sin is so bad. What does the Bible say about this, and what should we do? Thank you. Hmm. Liz, thank you for reaching out to us. Um, and my heart goes out to you, sister. I, I um, hear your question and the, the shame that you feel, um, the fact that you feel like maybe you're not deserving of ever getting married because of your past. How can, how can you restore this? Well, first, let me say, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that our sins are washed away your sins. No matter how bad you, you think they are, how bad they, they were, um, they're not so bad that Jesus' blood can't wash you clean. You think of, of what King David said after he had committed sexual sin, committed murder, um, acted in such a, such a terrible way, and this as an individual who had known the blessings of God, and he says to the Lord in Psalm 51, purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. In other words, the, the blood of Jesus is what restores us, what restores you. And let me just say this, there's this beautiful scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in all the gospels in John chapter four, where Jesus meets a woman at the well. And he doesn't just meet her by chance. He actually intentionally goes out of his way to pursue this woman. Now, what's interesting about this woman is she was a woman of Samaria. Um, the Jews didn't have dealings with Samaritans. You know, they sort of um, had a real issue with the Samaritans because of what they believed religiously. They were, they were treated as outsiders. But this woman in particular also had a past, uh, a sexual past. And Jesus says to her, you know, go and get your husband. And um, it, it basically, you know, comes out that she's had multiple lovers. Um, over the years, and now the person that she's living with isn't even uh, her husband. They're not. They're not really married. So she's she's living with someone. Presumably has this this intimate relationship, this sexual relationship out of wedlock. So she and she's a Samaritan. She's already rejected for that reason. But she also has this this past that probably caused the Jews to look at her and say, "Oh man, keep your distance." You know, she's she's you don't want anything to do with her. But Jesus did. He pursued her, and he met her at the well. And what's so interesting about that specifically, I've mentioned this on the broadcast before, it's one of the reasons why, again, this story is my favorite, is that that motif of a man meeting a woman at the well is something that you see over and over again, especially in the Old Testament. It's where so many of the patriarchs met their wives. They would go to the well, and there they would find a woman of marriageable age. And so you have this, this sort of background here in John chapter 4 of... Um, bridegroom imagery, finding a spouse, finding a bride. In fact, right before this, John the Baptist refers to Jesus as the bridegroom. So here, here you have the, the bridegroom, and he, who does he pursue? Who does he want to be a part of his bride, the church? This woman. This woman who the world had rejected, this woman who had probably been abused and mistreated and, and probably also had sinned greatly, you know, in all of these relationships and, and probably feels like man, nobody wants me. And of course, among the Jews, they, they didn't. But Jesus did. And sister, he loves you and wants you and welcomes you into his church and he washes you white as snow so that you don't have to walk around feeling like, oh man, I'm, I'm just a mess. No one will ever, ever want me. No one, um, you know, I, I, I'm disqualified from being married. No, not at all. No, you're not. Uh, Jesus loves you. Jesus has forgiven you as you've confessed your sins to him. And, um, and as you pray and as you seek him, I, I pray that the Lord would bring the, the perfect man, a godly man into your life who will love you as Jesus loves you. Um, as one of his, his own children, um, one of his own sheep that he's, he's died for, um, and, and you deserve nothing less than, than someone who's going to love you and treat you well. And so thank you, Liz, for reaching out, and may the Lord bless you.